What's going on guys? My name is Arrow and in today's video we are min-maxing speed and fun with a massive plague bearer. Let's get into it. So plague bearer is a skill that actually can't be linked to any damage supports. So it can only get damage from things like gem levels, alternate qualities, and sources of things like increased damage taken. So wither and scaling wither effect or lowering enemies chaos resistance and scaling maybe like despair curse effect. So we try to do all of those things in this build in order to create the best plague bearer build that we can. The goal of this build is not to get the highest POB numbers because plague bears POB numbers don't exist. You can't actually calculate it in POB, which is a little bit challenging, but we know that there are a number of ways to scale Plague Bearer, so we just do all of those things. And then my guess is that we have around five to six million damage with our Plague Bearer up, but I really don't know. And honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the POB numbers don't matter. The goal is to use this as a map blaster. It can kill pinnacle bosses. It's not good at it, but it can do it. Uh, but really, if you're playing this, you wanna speed through maps incredibly satisfying aoe incredibly satisfying explosions and the biggest plague bearer i've ever used now i know a lot of people are going to look at the helmet that i have and say i'm never going to get that helmet it's so expensive blah 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 the most important thing is just getting plus eight levels you get plus eight levels and then any amount of quality really is going to be fine i would get over 40. uh to be honest my helmet if it was i think 10 less quality wouldn't even change how much aoe i have so it, it actually being perfect doesn't really matter. So don't worry too much about getting a perfect helmet. Just get the plus eight, plus eight levels. The helm enchant, I paid a lab runner for divines to get that enchant for me. I didn't really notice the difference, to be honest. So I wouldn't worry too much about that either. Otherwise, the build is very approachable. Not a lot of expensive gear, uh, really cheap items like obliteration. So you can get cool corruptions like AOE for very cheap. So we'll talk about all of the different ways that we can scale this build uh, as we go through the gear. But really the goal was to just create a fast zoomy mapper that was a lot of fun and really you didn't have to aim because your plague bearer was the whole screen. So let's jump in and talk about some of the mechanics, interactions, and gear that is required for this build to function. Real quick, if you guys are enjoying the content, I'd appreciate it if you gave a like to the video and a subscribe for the channel. And if you really like what I do, you can come over and check out the Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I'm live almost every single day. We have a lot of fun over there. And that is where I create all of these weird and wacky builds. And you can see me putting them together live and maybe get your hands on a stasis prison before I make the video. So this is a level 98 occultist. We actually leveled from 97 to 98 exclusively with boss rushing. Uh, it's really, really fast. It does a great job with any sort of mapping mechanic that explosions are going to help with so legion breach harvest expedition or simply just sprinting through your maps as quickly as possible like an alk and go type of strategy it's very good at that as well so we get explosions from our obliteration and from profane bloom so 50 percent here to deal a quarter of their life and then another 20 percent for a quarter of their life so we are at 70 percent chance to explode enemies and then we have a 100% chance with Azanaths. I tried it without Azanaths and the explosions just don't feel as good. They don't chain quite as well. We don't have any major pro poison prolif. So using the Azanaths makes it so the enemies that don't die from that original explosion will also uh, have a chance to die from the additional explosions from Azanath. It just feels better and losing your glove slot on a build like this is not that important. You can get cool corruptions on here. I just grabbed whatever life uh, and uh and aura gems and we throw our haste and, and grace and tempest shield in here not a huge difference uh so get whatever corruptions you feel are best we are using the replica dragon fangs flight this is a plus three to all plague bearer gems amulet this was 35c who knows what they're going to be after this uh, i don't imagine a lot of people are selling these most people are probably using these for the three to one recipe so this actually might uh be challenging to get if a lot of people try to play this build and if that's the case, this is not that important. A plus one is actually probably going to give you more overall damage by going for something like plus one with like life and multi, and then your blade, your blade vortex is gonna do more damage. But the goal of this build was to make the juiciest Plague Bearer build that I could, and I really wanted Plague Bearer to carry the damage, and it really does. But this build can be slightly reconfigured to do more blade vortex damage and become more of a of a typical bv poison build but i i didn't want to do that so the helmet obviously we talked about uh i have a perfect 850 here i got this for three divines a couple weeks ago and i was like i'll make something with that later it's a little bit more expensive now to get one that's perfect 
but to get one that's plus eight and nothing else is less than two divines. Uh, if you want to get 40 quality on it, it's three or four divines. These are really not that difficult to get your hands on. Um, and honestly, even if you had a plus seven, it probably wouldn't be that big of a difference. So just getting this helmet with a pretty good rolls on it is all you need. You can get a number of other enchants as well. Things like reservation efficiency for your auras. Um, but you really don't need one. When I first started this build, I didn't have a helmet champ. The carcass jack, you just want AOE. Um, getting plus two makes your BV a little bit stronger. But things like area damage don't actually affect your plague bear. They only affect your BV. Death Rush Adrenaline is, is just awesome. Damage, uh, attack cast, and move speed. Shield Charge is our primary movement skill in this build, so going fast with that is really important. So we get attack speed where we can, including on this Corruption on the Wand. For our shield, nothing too special here. We grabbed Block, uh, Spell Suppress, and Chaos Res were the three suffixes, uh, and Evasion and Life for the prefixes. I think this was maybe a Divine. You might struggle to find something quite exactly like this, but getting suppress and block here is what's the most important thing. These boots were literally boots that I had in my inventory. They're absolutely terrible. I just needed to solve my strength issue, and I had a pair of fractured strength boots. Uh, ignore the enchant, it doesn't do anything for us. Uh, they're just boots that I had in my inventory, and I never replaced them because I didn't really need to. This belt is really, really awesome. This belt is a lot more expensive to buy than it is to craft. Basically what I did was I used Dex Essences to hit some res, and then once I did, I reforged life. You don't need this much life. I have 4,900 life on this build. It's definitely overkill. If you're going to die with 4,900 life, you're going to die with 4,600 life. So really, you just want to get life, Dex, and re uh, resistances here. Uh, the reason that I got all this decks is because I wanted to do more tattooing, which I never actually ended up doing. I was so busy playing this build that I forgot to make a lot of the upgrades that I ultimately wanted to make. The boots being one, a lot of tattoos being another. I actually went and got decks uh, on multiple pieces of gear so I could use all these points for things like flask effectoration to get better flasks with increased effect on them. Uh, and I just never did it. So... Uh, you have the opportunity to either not get the dexterity or uh, get it and then do the tattooing yourself. As far as gems, we have a Divine Blessing Malevolence. I click that basically just on single target. Uh, we have our Plague Bearer in the helmet. It is uh, level 33 and 73 quality. The quality gives AoE, so we have 36 AoE uh, built into the Plague Bearer gem here. That really helps. Uh, also getting levels gives us AoE as well. So this helmet is really, really good for just getting generic AOE. We have a shield charge and faster attacks for just going really, really fast. Dread Banner gives us a, a lot more chance to avoid damage by evading. Nearby enemies have less accuracy. That is effectively a more multiplier on your chance to evade. In the gloves, we have our main aura setup. We have an Enlightened 3. These are like 60C. Uh, and I have it in Tempest Shield, a Haste, and a Grace. Now, Haste feels like it might be a waste because it's... We're not really getting much out of the uh, cast speed. The attack speed is nice for our shield charge, but you might want to use something else here. But Tempest Shield ends up, ends up giving us a healthy chunk of spell block. We're at 54%, 39 attack block. We have 79 spell suppress chance. You could definitely invest into a little bit more of that. Probably what I would have done is gotten it on my boots. I really should have gotten it on my boots, but again, I never finished these. We have Freeze Immune from the Brian King Pantheon. Reduced duration of ignites, and then Tempest Shield gives us Shock Avoid. So we are pretty pretty all set for the normal elemental ailments. Poison is not a huge deal because we have 70 Chaos Res. Getting high Chaos Res is very easy with the Occultist because of the 60% built in. And these, these defensive layers for mapping feel really, really nice. When you combine that with a pretty healthy life pool of 4875, you just don't really die that much. Like I said, I leveled from 97 to 98. Fairly easy on this build, just doing maps. Uh, and that's 97 to 98 could be a pretty long grind. I did many, many hundreds of apps on this build and really, truly enjoyed it. So here in our boots, we have uh, Despair. That is on a self-cast uh, setup because we are using uh, Balance of Terror. Balance of Terror gives us Wither on hit. We have a bunch of different sources of Wither, and the idea is we want to be at max Wither stacks as quickly as possible because Wither is one of the best ways to scale our Plague Bearer. If you make an enemy take more damage, it makes Plague Bearer do more damage. Because, like we said, you can't link it to anything. The way to get more damage out of it is increased uh, 
damage taken from enemies and lowering their chaos res. So despair lowers their chaos res and apply, helps us apply wither. And we also grab some curse effect here on the tree to go along with an enhance to give us even more curse effect. So I think we have like 40 to 50 curse effect. So that's another negative 15 chaos res. We also have a divergent herald of agony. This is to give us better chance to poison. Getting 100 poison chance is all that matters. It doesn't have to be from a divergent herald of agony. It's just one of the easiest ways to do it. I think this gem can be kind of expensive. Yeah, it's a little over a divine for one of these. So it definitely adds a little bit of cost, but it simplifies the build. Also running an enhance uh, level three, very cheap, uh, makes this more effective. And then we have anomalous withering step also linked to this enhance that is giving us 10 wither buffs every time an enemy enters the area for the first time. So when we get close to enemies uh, with our withering step on our left click here, they get 10 immediate 10 debuffs on them. We have one per second, I believe it's per second from withering presence that lasts for 15 seconds. So this is really strong. So immediately we're at 11 and then blade vortex hits a few times and we are at cap. Our blade vortex, really the goal of the blade vortex is one quality of life and two quickly applying poisons. So we use awakened area of effect. We could use a damage support here, but this makes it so our BV is bigger. So it hits more things quicker and uh, helps us get our poisons back even faster. We use awaken added chaos just for damage. Void manip also damage. Awaken unleash so we don't have to cast it as often. One cast gives us six BV stacks as we have plus one on the tree uh, of unleash seals that comes from it comes from the caster mastery skills uh, supported by unleash at plus one then we use unbound ailments uh, now normally this can be kind of a bait or poison builds but the way that plague bearer chooses how many stacks you get is it takes the entire duration of the poison how much damage the poison would do if its full duration elapsed and it applies that to your plague bearer stacks so if you hit an enemy with a 30 second poison that's normally not very useful, but for purposes of Plague Bearer, all that damage gets added to your Plague Bearer stacks. And because BV is not really designed to do our main damage, it doesn't really matter that it's kind of fake damage. So Awaken Unbound Ailments is the best damage support for us here. And then we grab Anomalous BV uh, in order to give us Chaos Damage Leech. We do enough hit damage with our BV to get to Leech Cap. So that is quite nice. These really are not as expensive as I thought. You can get one for one to one and a half divines. Uh, I originally had I originally had purchased a all quality void manipulation for like eight divines, and then a viewer in chat thankfully reminded me that <laughs> Blade Vortex has an anomalous version that gives uh, leech. Our flash phasing is super important on a build like this. Now you're normally going to hit and explode everything on the screen as soon as possible, but the nature of a blade vortex uh, plague bearer build is you want to be inside the packs of monsters so having phasing is really important we just want to get evasion move speed uh, reduced effective curses is very nice onslaught and attack speed and evasion here attack speed again just makes our shield charge really zoomy when we have all our buffs up we we fly around the map pretty quick for the ascendancy we have void beacon uh, this is one of the few ways to scale plague bearer damage is reducing enemies Chaos resistance, this goes 20% reduced chaos res, that's massive. And nearby enemies have 100% reduced life regen. It's actually really quite nice. Withering Presence gives us chaos damage that works for our BV. Uh, 60 chaos resistance for us is phenomenal. The Wither Inflict and nearby hindered enemies deal 15% reduced damage over time. Uh, in order to enable that, we grab two hinder enemies on hit with spells. Our BV hits pretty often, so we're hindering pretty often. Profane Bloom, we talked about for big explodies. In order to enable this, you have to curse on hit. That's why Azanath is fantastic because it gives us curse on hit with temp chains. Lastly, Unholy Authority, we just need another curse because we're using temp chains and despair. So this also lets us apply our hexes to hexproof enemies. Otherwise, hexproof maps would be uh, very unfun for us. So for the tree, let's talk about our jewels first. So we have a watcher's eye that gives us chance to evade while affected by grace. That's all this does. This was pretty cheap. This mod by itself is incredibly powerful and uh, it really helps get our evade much, much higher with no flask. We're already at 73%. We have another 29% reduced effective curses with you. So when our flask is up, we are, we're almost at 90% uh, curse reduction. You can grab some tattoos to finish that off. Unholy Might on crit. I actually have two clusters that have this. This isn't necessary. You just want to get one. 
Uh, I should have I should have gotten maybe unholy grace up front instead, but I have two, so this is really up all the time because we we uh, we hit often enough with a even with a small crit chance that you're gonna get unholy might up for a uh, pretty good uptime even on single target. For our mediums, we're really going for AOE, so assert dominance is super important. I think I have it in all four. That's a hundred percent total area of effect if you've killed five enemies recently. AOE doesn't matter on single target, so for a build like this, assert dominance is key. And then we grab Towering Threat, Towering Threat. Grab another Towering Threat here. So lot, really getting that life pool up. And then another one here. So four of those and four of those. We use a Sublime Form in order to get one, some resistances, because I, I had trouble capping my res on this build uh, because of some silly gearing mistakes, like trying to get decks uh, on too many pieces of gear. And that we crafted this ourselves. You just alt spam until you hit sublime form and one or two other good mods. Uh, and then you just exalt slam up, whatever we have. We exalt slammed regen life for rares. I don't have too many rares in the build as far as jewels, but you just basically want damage over time and life. Uh, we use the blue nightmare over here to get a bunch of spell block. So basically the way this works is you convert all of the int travel nodes in the radius to uh, Lightning res with the tattoo of the Valico Storm Rider, and it makes it give you lightning res and spell block. So with uh, Tempest Shield, we have 54 spell block on top of a good chunk of spell suppression, which makes us feel pretty tanky. I found that getting a good amount of both spell suppress and spell block feels really, really nice. So these tattoos are very cheap. So you want to put them on, on all the ones you have available. You could also tattoo this one and even this one to get even more spell block and a little bit more lightning res uh, if you've got the extra points. We grab a plus one dex skill gems tattoo here for our plague bear and our blade vortex. It also works for haste and grace. So just very, very nice for like 30 C. We want to take this AOE here. Uh, the poison mastery for increased uh, maximum plague value is really nice. That doesn't show in game, but that does in increase your uh, value. That doesn't show in POB, but it does increase the amount of damage you're doing. We come and get this damage over here. I grabbed this node because I noticed that this 10% pushed me over another AOE threshold. Uh, you may or may not need to take that. Kind of weird pathing through here, but grabbing things like movement speed and chaos damage, physical damage decks, this is all really nice to have stuff. More spell suppress. These move speed tattoos I had on the old build that I played on this character, so just, I just left them there. And all of these need to be tattooed. I should have tattooed every single one of these uh, dex nodes. I don't know what I ex would have used on them. Probably things like flash duration to get better uptime of increased effect flasks. But I never ended up doing it, so the world is your oyster here. You can just make these life, whatever you want. Uh, the poison mastery of poisons you inflict on non-poison enemies deal 300% increased damage. This is really, really nice for your plague bearer and how quickly you build up stacks. Basically, when it goes down, if you go to the next pack and blow them up, what happens is you blow up a pack and each enemy explodes and does a massive poison on the nearest nearby enemy by just doing explode damage because we have generic chance to poison. All those poison hits count towards your plague bearers total stacks which means you build up super super fast usually one exploding pack after your pb runs out is enough to get you to just press it again of course we are eldritch battery solves our mana problem very very nice and that's really it this build was a lot of fun if you are looking for a map blaster i highly recommend this you can modify it to your liking you can get more damage out of it by making it more blade blade vortex focused but I really wanted to play a build that maximized the Plague Bearer because I thought that was a lot of fun and I was right. This build rocked. So thank you for watching. Check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. We play lots of fun new builds over there all the time. I'm just about to start a new build this afternoon. If you want to support me, you can give this video a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Also, all of my links are down below. I just started a merch store. We got a Discord, a Patreon. All that stuff is down in the description. So thank you so much for watching. And as always... Take care.